بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویورز ویلکم ٹو مائی چینل اینڈ ان ٹوڈیز ویڈیو وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ایز یو کین سی دا ہیرنگ کوشی از مین ویلیو تھیورم اینڈ اس واز اٹ واز پریزنٹڈ بائی فرینچ میتھمیٹیشین اگسٹن لوئس کوشی بلونگنگ ٹو دس پیریڈ آف یور ایٹین ٹو نائنٹین سینچری اینڈ ہز تھیورم states these points that and i must say that this theorem contains of two function it is based on two functions the requirement of this function uh, are the two functions and without two function the theorem is not going to be explained well and neither it is going to be so long uh, going to exist or going to resist and all that so anyway so it says that if two functions and make sure that presently we are we are, we are studying this theorem on the basis of a single variable function okay both f and g are the single variable functions and the conditions are that if the two functions f and g if they are continuous on a close interval a b and a b are any real numbers if they are continuous and they are differentiable on an open interval of this ab plus the derivative of function g should not be equal to zero no matter what point you are taking within this open interval at any point the derivative of the function g should not be equal to zero all right if these three conditions are satisfied then there is going to exist at least one point C belonging to the open interval AB okay such that the ratio of the vertical differences of the two functions should be equal to the ratio of the slopes of these two function at the point C all right So I must say that Cauchy's mean value theorem is the father of your mean value theorem, Lagrange's mean value theorem. Lagrange's uh, mean value theorem is the special case, or I must say it's a simple case of your Cauchy's mean value theorem. And I must, uh, I think I should touch that thing as well, that... I, and I have discussed my Lagrange's mean value theorem in my previous video. You can see the link in the, in the, in the description box. And also the explanation of the tangent line and derivatives. You can also find its, uh, its video in the description, in, in the description box. Uh, you can find the link of it. So just for the acquaintance, you can watch those videos as well. So that will be helpful, I must say. So uh, you see... Cauchy's mean value theorem uh, explains Lagrange's mean value theorem how. You see that if I say that uh, the function g is defined like this, it's a unit function, then at point b, the g of b will be this, and at point a, the g of b will be something like this. If you just try to take the derivative of this function with respect to x, of course, then the g dash x is going to be 1, okay? And you know that this x belongs to the open interval a, b, and you can say that for all x belongs to your open interval a, b, so x could be c, all right? So this thing tells that your g of, sorry, g of c is also going to be 1 all right so if we just substitute these uh, these values in this uh, definition then it's going to be like this that f of b minus f of a upon g of b is your b g of a is your a f dash c upon 1 which is actually your f dash c all right so you see uh, according to the lagrange's mean value theorem if you are having a certain function f and it is continuous on a closed interval a b and differentiable in an open interval a b and there is going to exist at least one point c in the open interval a b such that 
f dash c should be equal to this. That's what your Lagrange's mean value theorem states. And it is well explained in my video. You can see I, I repeat it is its link is mentioned in the description box. You can watch if you want to. Okay, so now we are going to approach to a relative example for the Cauchy's mean value theorem. We are, uh, we are going to uh, solve that example and then we will try to understand the same question geometrically, okay? We are going to have a geometrical interpretation of uh, Cauchy's mean value theorem with the help of that example. But before going to geometrical approach, we should solve it numerically and obtain the value of C. So here you go, the example. Let me write it for you first. Okay, so here you go, an example is quite an easy one. And here your f of x is defined as your x square, your g of x is as x cubed. And you have to verify Cauchy's mean value theorem on this assigned interval, uh, closed interval 1, 2. And if these two functions satisfy Cauchy's mean value theorem, then you have to find the value of c. All right, so first of all, what we do, uh, we are going to uh, you can either use a graphic calculator or you can draw a graph manually of these two functions on a piece of paper and find out that if are these two functions continuous on this closed interval uh, 1, 2, which are actually your AB. So you know well that the graph of your x squared, it's a parabola and it is going to be something like this once when I try to draw it. It is going to be like this. Okay, it's a parabola, it's a continuous function. And the same way, if you try to plot the graph of your x cubed, then it's going to give you a shape something like this. So this is also a continuous function. Okay, this is for the x cubed, this is for the x squared. You can also confirm it by yourself. Okay, so these both these two functions are continuous within the open, within uh, the, uh, no matter how far you're extending your interval, this continues throughout. So, Definitely, this, it is continuous within this uh, piece of interval or uh, a defined interval. <coughs> Next point comes, are these two functions differentiable on the open interval a, uh, uh, 1, 2 or not? For that purpose, first of all, we are going to take the derivative of these two functions and then we try to figure out, uh, we, we try to analyze, are these two functions, I mean the derivative of these two functions are giving you a well-defined values uh, no matter what value you t you pick from this open interval 1, 2. So once when I just take the derivative, I just differentiate the function with respect to my variable x, I just got 2x. And you're well aware, uh, those who are aware with the uh, d major derivative, intrinsic derivative formulas, they're not going to find any difficulty. So I'm using the formula of xn here, so it is going to be nx n minus 1 like this. Okay, so <clears throat> for all x belonging to this open interval 1, 2, all right, you can also say that actually 1 is less than your x less than 2. You're you are taking any value of x within this range. You substitute it. You just substitute these values of x in these two functions, you're definitely going to get a well-defined answer, okay? So none of these values of x are, are giving you an undefined value of these functions. So this thing reveals that these two functions are differentiable within the open interval 1, 2. So first two points are satisfied. And another thing is the third point, and it's quite obvious. You can see that this is your g of x, and whatever the value you pick up from this open interval, the value of x, you're not having any zero number here. So zero is lying outside this interval, but there is no danger. So all the numbers are non-zero. They're definitely going to give you a positive answer because you're having squared here. So there is no threat. All the value of x on, sub, on getting substituted in this function will give you a value, and will give you a non-zero value. Third point is also satisfied. So the Cauchy's, both these two functions uh, have satisfied the Cauchy's first three or the, or the mandatory postulates. So definitely there is going to exist a value c within this open interval. 
such that this condition is going to be satisfied then so let us try to find out f of b and f of a g of b and g of a and then we just try to find out the value of c so you see our f of b is going to be okay so f of b our b is 2 and our a is 1 we know that so f of b is giving you for f of a is giving you 1 all right similarly your g of b is giving you okay 2 cubed it gives you 8 and g of 1 gives you 1 cubed which is your 1 all right on the other hand your f dash c this is our f dash x so f dash c is going to be 2c and g dash c is going to be our 3c square all right presently c is unknown so that's why it's simply a variable work just a variable work now we are going to substitute these values in this cauchy equation all right so it is going to be f of b minus f of a upon g of b minus g of a and is equal to your f of c upon g of c all right this and this gets cancelled you're simply having 2 upon 3c all right and this is your 3 upon 7 and it's 2 upon 3c all right so you can either take a reciprocal or you can do a cross movement so you can get the value of your c then so this thing tells that if I take the reciprocal so the movement gives me this okay let me write down over here so this thing tells that it is C is my 14 upon 9 so it is 14 upon 9 and it is a uh, non-terminating non-repeating rational number and on solving you can confirm it from your calculator is 1.555 so you can approximate it just it goes something like this so you can approximate it 1.56 and you see 1.56 it belongs it belongs to your open interval one two all right but this is something that we just did uh, <coughs> algebraically or <coughs> excuse me numerically now we are going to move towards geometrical interpretation or geometrical understanding of this entire work or entire, entire theorem involving this example. Okay, so let's move on and let's try to have a look over there. Okay, so here you go, a nice software and over here we are going to, uh, we will try to understand the Cauchy mean value theorem geometrically uh, with the help of the example that we have just solved. Okay, so here you go. Uh, I'm dealing with the first, uh, what you say, uh, function f of x, which was our x, x, x is squared, and it is actually a parabola, as I told you already. So this is it. This is your x squared, you can see, all right? And before approaching to this, uh, to this entire uh, geometrical uh, work, I must say that I've explained in, in one of my video tangent line and derivatives where I, where I exhaustively tried to explain the con the geometrical interpretation of your derivatives and I told you uh, that uh, the derivative of uh, uh, no the slope of the tangent line of uh, a certain point uh, um, the slope of the tangent line of a certain at a certain point of tangency on a major curve is, uh, is actually the derivative of the function evaluated at that point, all right? So that's what I exhaustively tried to explain in that video. You can see the link of that video in the description box. 
So this is now your function x squared graph, which is a beautiful parabola. And I tried to find out the derivative of this function, which is actually a 2x. So let us try to draw the, the, the figure, uh, the, the graph of your 2x, which is a straight line definitely because it's a linear function. So this is your, what you say, the graph of your 2x, all right? So I told you that uh, this is the graph of the derivative of this uh, function x squared. So, and we have just calculated that the point C was 1.56 approximately or 14 upon 9. So if we just try to find out the coordinate of your, the y coordinate of this 1.56, it is... It is going to be one point. We are approaching to the one point five six. Okay, we are getting close. So this is okay. Here we are. It's giving you three point one two. You can see there. Okay, so this is the f dash c. Uh, point c is giving you three point one two. All right. That's it. So keep this thing noted somewhere. So this is your 3.12 F dash C. This is the value. All right. <clears throat> now we are going to approach to the uh, tangent line at the point C. At uh, the point C is the point of tangency on this blue line. And at that point of tangency we are going to plot the tangent line so I've just tried to maintain a tangent line here okay so this tangent line and this is my my point of tangency at 1.56 <clears throat> I'm having 2.434 2.434 2.434 is actually the y coordinate of this tangent line. So now what you do, you have just noted that uh, <coughs> the excuse me. So I'm sorry, this throat infection is too disturbing. Okay, now I'm composed. So now you see, this is a slope of the this is the tangent line passing through the point of tangency 1.56. You can see. So now you can pick up any two points you want on this of this purple tangent line and try to find out the slope. And whatever the slope value you are going to encounter, you're going to find out that should be exactly equal to this 3.12 corresponding to 1.56 right over here. Okay, sorry. 1.56 okay it should be equal to one point three point one two all right so we pick up any two points here let it be let it be this point one point is this okay another point whatever you want to take let us take this one okay but this is your x1 y1 and x2 y2 and we are going to apply these points in the slope formula and we are going to get our answers all right so my y2 is 0 0.924 and my and my y1 is zero all right 0 0.924 okay this is my calculator 0 0.924 minus zero means the same thing and this is and the corresponding x2 let me see once again Okay, so it is let us pick up this thing. Forget about that. So it is 
one coordinate is this 1.1 and 0.998 okay this is our first coordinate 0.998 so this is our y2 0.998 minus 0 divided by 1.1 that is my x2 minus and my corresponding 0.78 this is my x1 okay so you can see that it is giving you exactly 3.118 on approximation 3.12 and it is similar to what we obtained on this derivative function graph okay here you go so this is it one thing we noticed f dash 1.56 or the function value at 14 upon 9 that was the value of c gives us 3.12 gives the thing in mind all right now move ahead and see the other graph and i'm going to change my work here okay the derivative all right so okay now I'm just undoing all these all right now here we go I start from the beginning this is my function of x cubed which is my g of x and it is this function and this is the graph all right the derivative of this graph is 3x squared which is having this curve all right now at 1.56 or 14.9 this derivative function graph is giving me a value which is carefully we are going to do it okay 1.56 7.33 at approximately so okay 7.301 okay 7.301 all right now this is the thing and now we are going to plot the tangent line at 1.56 the value of c which is this within this open interval 1 2 all right you can see the activity of this tangent line while moving within this open interval 1 2 okay so if i just try to stop it and I will stop it at my 1.56, the value that I evaluated numerically there. Okay, here we are. All right. Now we just pick up, we just pick up any two points on this tangent line and we try to find out the slope. One point is this. Okay, and the other point, let us should pick up some easy one. Okay, one point one six point eight seven six. All right, point eight seven six. And we are going to divide it with our 1.16 is our x2 minus and this is my one x1 1.04 you can see it 1.04 and you see 7.3 exact answer all right that so the slope of the tangent line at the certain point of tangency on the original curve is actually the derivative of that curve evaluated at that point 
All right. So this is our 7.3, the slope of this tangent line. And this, let us see it again, 1.56. Seven point three zero is close, very very close. So that's a seven point three zero one. We are going to divide it with our three point one two. Three point one two f dash c divided by seven point three zero one f dash g dash c, and you are having this thing, and this is actually your. Okay, the error was coming because we just approximated the value of 14 upon 9. It was in a non-recurring uh, rational fraction and rational number. It was 1.555 and, and constantly it is going on. And we just approximated to 1.56 and there's some reason of our, that minor error. So if we just try to figure out like this, that the F dash C was actually 3.11 once when we substitute the value of C that we calculated numerically and G dash C is giving us this answer you can further check it from the calculator that 14 divide by 9 multiply by 2 this is it so that's what a non terminating and non rip and, uh, and recurring decimal value is here and in the same way once when we try to find out the 3c square, so 14 divided by 9, you take the square, you multiply it with your 3. This is the value, and it is this, okay? So we are going to divide these two values here. So what answer we are going to get? So... saving my time and I just take the reciprocal so it is 3 upon 7 all right and 3 upon 7 same answer we are going to get once when we find out our the ratio of our f of b minus f of a upon g of b minus g of a we are getting the same answer okay so that's what the stuff was all about and I hope that uh, geometrically the stuff is also clear to you to at least to uh, to a little extent so that's what it all carries your Cauchy's mean value theorem and as I told you in the beginning that our Lagrange's mean value theorem is the simple case of Cauchy's uh, mean value theorem so that's all for this uh, video and it's all done and if you find this video helpful please subscribe my channel hit on the like and put down your feedback in the comment box and share this video as much as you can and just keep on uh keep keep in touch yourself with this channel so that you will be keep on getting notified with the new upgradations take good care of yourself allah hafiz